Honest, Jay Nowak. Oh yeah. A pleasure to meet all at last, and welcome back to Flying with the Foam on HJN. And right now, I'm pretty darn excited to showcase another blaster that had been used during the production of Nerf Secret Reveal Bolts of Intrigue. And just a reminder that, well, it ain't part one and part two anymore. It is now a full-on feature film. And to prove this, well, here comes another rival blaster that I had used during the production of the film itself. Yeah, this is big, all right. So big that the Saturn could pretty much be squealing. Yeah, it may not be as big as some blasters that I have used during the production of the film as well, but this is in fact one out of many that I've used during the final battle with the enemy and the pretty big army of Dark Clones. Of course, Nerf Secret Revealed After Saw pretty much clears up a lot of that sort of lore, as it does take place after the events of, well, the last scene in the film itself. And this is pretty much just, well, a continuation of it in general. Although it ain't really connected to lore in any way. So this is just a simple set of reviews here. Flying with the Foam is pretty much just that. It may not have any connection with Nerf Secret Revealed truly, but it still does bear a lot when it comes to the lore behind it. This is, in fact, the rival's Jupiter. Probably one of the only blasters that has itself actual bolt action. And oddly enough, I'd say Wow. I'd say that this is pretty intense stuff going on around here, but the way I see a blaster like this, it just screams absolute epic awesomeness all across the board. And the reason for this as well, because first of all, this is one of the only blasters that you could find within the Edge series, because the Edge series had pretty much been known for the fact that there were supposed to be some reskins of some other blasters out there, like the Kronos and Helios, but unfortunately those got cancelled. And when that actually happened, there were quite a few different concepts that Hasbro had taken down with them. There was in fact going to be a set of holsters that you could equip to your belt or something like that, where you could store your Kronos blaster in, and there was actually going to be a rival style drum mag. Yeah. No joke. A rival drum mag. That would have been impressive if they actually knew how to put it together. But because those concepts have been lost and production have been canceled, I guess we won't be able to find out about how a rival's drum magazine is going to work. Maybe not for a while, but who knows what could take place. Well, anyways, aside from its usage of bolt action, this is as close as you can get to actually having yourself a Nerf sniper rifle in many, many ways other than just this. Because this blaster actually comes with its own bipod. A bipod which does actually work a bit better than the Centurion's bipod or even the Stampede's bipod for the most part. Because the Stampede bipod didn't really do so well as a bipod. It was more about a grip and that'd pretty much be it. But the bipod on the Jupiter here is yet another time where I should mention that I don't have it with me at this moment, so I'm seriously going to have to apologize for that right now. But if there's one thing that's truly missing from this, it'd be a scope. Right here on this tactical rail where there could have been a scope. And yet, apparently that did not happen. That's really disappointing already, but you know, you know what? I could probably give it a pass. I suppose that the production of a scope for Rivals Blasters is probably a project in and of itself. I don't really know. I probably could do some custom work on something like that soon enough. When the time does come, I might try it out and see where it takes me. 
But until that does happen, let's just, well, be grateful for what we have here. Although, right here in the back, this is basically just a monopod over here that you can extend downwards to give yourself a little extra support. I don't see much of a point in that, but in all honesty, the way I see this, this could actually be the magazine right here instead of, well, up here really. Because here as a Nerf Blaster, you reload the Jupiter by pulling the bolt backward and just inserting HIR discs right in here. HIR rounds of all sorts, well, regardless if they're the regular yellow ones or if they're the edge color ones which are lime green or if they're the camo ones or anything else. The Jupiter certainly does seem to handle pretty well holding 10 rounds at once. That's already a pretty good capacity. It may not be as big as certain blasters out there like the Chaos, Nemesis, or Prometheus, but wow, it sure does handle a lot. But the way I see it, I guess the Jupiter is probably not meant for everybody here because the Rivals blasters are advertised to be for people 14 and up. 14 years of age, to be more specific. I guess I don't really know what else to say about the Jupiter, but it still is one of my favorite blasters from the Rival series at this point. I don't really know much else to say, but that's the Jupiter for you. One of the only edge blasters that you could find within the Rival series, but pretty soon, the third and final that we currently have in the Edge series is going to have to be talked about pretty soon, so please stay tuned for more here on Flying with the Foam and all that. And if you want to see more, go down to my channel. Make sure that you like, subscribe, comment, follow me on social media, and stay on the Hollywood side.